<clears throat> I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our service this afternoon as we come together on this day that despite the agony and suffering of our Lord Jesus, we call it good. Because we know how God acted in history in that moment on that cross for each one of us, those gathered at the foot of the cross and those who've been followers of the cross since the, from then till now. So welcome to each one. Just a, a word to those participating in the um, Passion Narrative. Uh, at the time of the Passion Narrative, uh, those playing Jesus, Pilate, and the narrator will come forward. The rest of you who are participating, just read your parts from the pew, but please stand up as you do that. Let us pray. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. My faith looks up to thee. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant will prosper. He will be highly exalted. But many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one would scarcely know he was a man. And he will startle many nations. Kings will stand speechless in his presence. But they will see what they had not been told. They will understand what they had not heard about. 
Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's past to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all this is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servants will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer by night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. 
For by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. For he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter into heaven's most holy place through the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Hear what the Spirit is saying. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, 
who betrayed him also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the, the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, He said, now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter, also standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching, and Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him. He denied it and said, One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusations do you bring against this man? And they answered, Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. 
Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you to that about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew. Am I? Your own nation, the chief priests, have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, Who are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Well, Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. If you have a custom, I release someone to you for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Now, Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, And striking him on the face, Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. But the Jews answered him, Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it was given from you above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out. Wait, wait, Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered. <laughs> then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha, where they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. 
They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and a disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was, that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of the preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows what he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. My people, what wrong have I done for you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. I'm your creator, Lord of the universe. I have entrusted this world to you, but you have created the means to destroy it. My people, what wrong have I done to you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. I made you in my image, but you have degraded body and spirit and marred the image of your God. You have deserted me and turned your backs on me. My people, what wrong have I done to you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. I filled the earth with all that you need so that you might serve and care for one another as I have cared for you. But you have cared only to serve your own wealth and power. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. My people, what wrong have I done to you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. I made my children of one blood to live in families rejoicing in one another, but you have embittered the races and divided the nations. My people, what wrong have I done to you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. I commanded you to love your neighbor as yourself, to love and forgive even your enemies, but you have made vengeance your rule and hate your guide. <clears throat> My people, what wrong have I done to you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. In the fullness of time, I sent you my son, that in him you might, might know me, and through him might find life and peace. But you put him to death on the cross. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and worthy, have mercy upon us. My people, what wrong have I done to you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. Through the living Christ, I called you into my church to be my servants to the world. But you have grasped at privilege and forgotten my will. My people, what wrong have I done to you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. I have given you a heavenly gift and a share in the Holy Spirit. I have given you the spiritual energies of the age to come, but you have turned away and crucified the Son of God afresh. My people, what wrong have I done to you? What good have I not done for you? Listen to me. I have consecrated you in the truth. I have made you to be one in the unity of the Father and of the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you have divided my church and shrouded my truth. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and have my servant. Turn again, my people, listen to me. Let your bearing to one another arise out of your life in Jesus Christ. He humbled himself and in obedience accepted the death of the cross. And, but I have bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, 
and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Turn again, my people. Listen to me. Father, hear prayer. Forgive us and stop our ears that we may receive the gospel of the cross. Lighten our eyes that we may see your glory in the face of your Son. Penetrate our minds that your truth may make us whole. Irradiate our hearts with your love that we may love one another for Christ's sake. Father, forgive us. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad. For you, you judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase in God. Our own God will bless us. God will bless us, and the, all the ends of the earth shall fear him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. O Savior of the world, who by cross and the precious blood have redeemed us.
invite you to be seated for the prayers of intercession. God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Therefore, we pray to our Heavenly Father for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Church of God throughout the world, for unity in faith, in witness, and in service, for bishops and the other ministers, and those whom they serve. for our Bishop William, and to the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this place, for those to be baptized, for those who are mocked and persecuted for their faith, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase in love, and persevere it in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the nations of the world and their leaders, for Charles our King in the parliaments of this land, for those who administer the law and all who serve in public office, for all who strive for justice and reconciliations, that by God's help, the world may live in peace and freedom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Most gracious God and Father, in whose will it is our peace, turn our hearts and the hearts of all to yourself, that by the power of your Spirit, the peace which is founded on justice may be established throughout the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's unsigned people, the Jewish, the first to hear his word, for greater understanding between Christian and Jew, for the removal of our blindness and the brightness of the heart, that God will grant us grace to be faithful to his covenant and to grow in love of his name. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God of Abraham, bless the children of your covenant, both Jew and Christian, Take from us all blindness and bitterness of heart and hasten the coming of your kingdom when the Gentiles shall be gathered in, all Israel shall be saved and we shall dwell together in mutual love and peace under the one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who not believe the gospel of Christ, for those who had not heard the message of salvation, for all who have lost faith, for the contemptuous of scornful, for those who are enemies of Christ and persecute those who follow him, 
for all who deny the faith of Christ crucified, that God will open their hearts to the thundered, lead them to faith in obedience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful God, creator of all the people of the earth, have compassion on all who do not know you, and by the preaching of your gospel with grace and power, gather them into one fold of the one shepherd, Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who suffer, for those who are deprived and oppressed, for all who are sick for those in darkness, in doubt, and in despair, in loneliness, and in fear, for prisoners, captives, and refugees, for the victims of face accusation and violence, for all at the point of death, and those who watch beside them, that God in his mercy will sustain them with the knowledge of his love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of the sad, the strength of those who suffer, hear the prayers of all your children who cry out of any trouble, and to every distressed soul, Grant mercy, relief, and refreshment through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commend ourself, ourselves and all God's children to his unfailing love and pray for the grace of a holy life that with all who have died in the peace of Christ, we may come to the fullness of eternal life and the joy of the resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. And by the tranquil operation of your perpetual providence, carry out the work of our salvation, and let the whole world feel and see the things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are returning to perfection through him from whom every, uh, they take their orig origin, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may remain seated or stand as you would like for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy Lord will be done Lord on Lord earth Lord as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Grant mercy and grace to the living, rest to the departed, to your church peace and concord, and to us sinners forgiveness and everlasting life and glory for the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are alive and reign, God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. And in a time of quiet, we're going to invite those. You all received a nail when you came in the back door of the church. This is your opportunity for a personal act of, of, of faith and love and devotion on this Good Friday. We invite you to bring your, your nail forward and place it at the foot of the cross as part of our remembering of the love of God today. And if you find uh, in your bulletins, Jesus, remember me, it's number 634. And of course, the, the good thief calls out to Jesus, uh, and today you will be with me in paradise. This echoes that part of the story. And we're just going to sing it quietly four or five times and, and then um, Jeff will play some quiet music to conclude this part of the service.
be able please stand for our dismissal. And uh, I'd like to say, please, after this short reading and dismissal, we will depart off the, the church, from the church in silence, please. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked the pilot for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who early vis had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and the oils, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and the stripes of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial custom. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus, Jesus there. 